Photoshop tutorial from tutorvid.com. This tutorial is going to show you how to create a smoke effect on text like this one. Uh, so the first thing is we'll start with a new image, control N, and you can give it a name, smoke text. And I'm going to create a fairly large image. If I'm creating it from scratch, you may as well have a decent size. So this is 25 megapixels. And background, I'll, I'll have it as white. I'm going to make it black in a second. So to fill the background with black, the first thing, I'll press Alt Backspace. That fills it with a foreground color. Now I'll create some smoking text. Press T for the text button. And then I'm using the French script MT for my font. And then I'll just type out smoke. Oops, I'm using black font here. Make sure your font color up here is white. And try that again. The text. It's pretty small, but I'll just upsize it in a second. Now that we have a bit of text there, you can press Control T and then scale it here. I like the scale it here just because it's a little easier than trying to pick which font size is going to be the correct size to fill my screen. So somewhere around there. Now we're going to create our smoke coming out of here, and we're going to do that with the pen tool. So press P for pen, or you find it over here. And now less is more for this, so don't go creating too wide of pen paths. And if you don't know how the pen works, check out a tutorial on those. But basic is you click once, that it starts it, click again, and then before you let go of the mouse, you can move it around and that sort of bends it. And this is maybe a good pen practice too, because you don't have to create anything too specific here. So just create some sort of bendy lines. They can overlap a little bit like this. And it's pretty good to keep them fairly thin so that you don't have too much smoke. And then when it comes into the letter, you can maybe blend it nicely into the curve. And then at the very end, close it, you'll see this little circle there on the pen. And then it closes that path. And then we can start a new path. And it doesn't really matter how it looks, because we're going to be altering it later on. I'll maybe make another one here. All right, now, so do that for the rest of these letters, and I'll just uh, take a break while I do that. And there we go. And now uh, we're going to fill all these with white. So create a new layer. This is going to be our smoke layer. And now to select this path, the paths hide over in this paths tab. And it should be showing here. If it's not, go up to window and click paths it might be up here or somewhere and anyway so control click this here work path and you'll see you selected all your paths go back to the layers and then press control backspace which fills this selection with white and there we have our start of our smoke press control d to deselect and take a drink of your cappuccino Okay, now we can rename this layer as smoke. You can see the other one is the text smoke because it has that T there. Now I like to keep one of these as sort of the control layer. So I'm going to create a copy of it and move this first smoke layer just down to the bottom here so I don't get it confused and make it invisible. Just so I have it later if I want to create duplicates of it, I have a sort of a hard copy all the time. So onto our smoke layer, we're going to blur it so filter blur gaussian blur and this will be sort of the start of the smokiness and we can do a fair bit maybe 40 pixels for this image depending on how many how large your image is uh, will depend on how many pixels to blur it and then go up to filter the quify and this is where we pull and twist our smoke glare now your image might not have the background showing, which is the black. So you might just have an image that looks like this. So you'll probably want to show the background so you can sort of see the smoke. And here I'm going to use just the background. If you use all layers, it also uses the layer that is not liquefied yet, that smoke layer. So you can't really see how it's going to look in the end. So I'm going to just use the background or that layer that's just black. And then mode, put the background behind and opacity 100%. So now I can start using this brush up here with this tool and click and drag and that 
sort of pulls this here smoke layer into different wisps and uh, forms. So you just sort of play with this for a while and try to make it look organic and smoke-like. If you play with it a bit, you can get some sort of techniques of smoky looking brush strokes. All right, so I'm just going to do this for a while. So I'll pause it and come back. And so I'm getting close to done here. Uh, if you look on the right, you can see a few different settings, uh, the brush size, the density and the pressure. So you can play with those and see how they affect your brush. As you can see, there's plenty of smoke on this image, even though all the lines were pretty tight. Okay, so I'll leave it like this for now and click OK. Now you can see we have a little bit of problem on the bottom here, but we can, we'll fix that at the end. And I'm going to duplicate this layer with the control J. And so I have two of these layers and I'm going to blur the one layer a little bit. Blur. And that'll be sort of behind this other layer. So that'll be a little bit more see through. And so you can see this other layer behind. Now with just this layer show, I'm going to liquefy that layer and give a few little wisps on that smoke. Now there's a few other tools here uh, you can play with. Uh, the spinner tool, for example, this rotates the smoke around the brush. Which can look good maybe on the edge of things to get sort of a nice curl. Used in moderation, I suppose. And then there's a push in tool, push out tool and a few different things. So play with those. I'm going to create a little bit of spaces in here. Okay, I'll keep it like that for now. Press OK and wait for it to render. All right, now it's done rendering. Now we can put on the lower layer again, make it visible, and then reduce the opacity of this most recent layer, maybe to around 50%, and look at the top layer. And it's nice to keep right at the letters to keep it pure white, but at the top, I think it can be faded away a little bit. So I'm going to create a layer mask. Check out a tutorial on those if you don't know how they work. And with the gradient tool G, make sure this gradient is selected, the one on the left. And then this here from black to white. And make sure your colors are black and white. And then I'm going to draw a gradient fairly far and that makes it sort of fade out as it goes to the top and I can maybe do that with the other one as well draw a layer mask and a little bit of a gradient and one last thing I can do for this I'm going to create a duplicate of both of these layers so I get sort of both of these layers of how they look so control J on that layer and control J on this layer and I'm gonna move them up together three and four and then I'm going to merge these two layers. So now these are on one layer. And now I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to create a fairly heavy blur on this layer so that as things go to the top, they get even more blurry and sort of spread out. And then I'm going to create a layer mask and a gradient again. So that this layer takes effect only at the top and sort of blurs things out a little bit more. And I can reduce the opacity a bit. So here we have uh, All Right Smoke. And now I'm going to fix the bottom here. If this S is smoking, it needs to be white all the way on the top here and no white on the bottom. So I'm going to go down to my text layer and click on it. Then click on the New Layer button here, which creates a new layer right above the text. And I'm going to brush in some white which is the color of my smoke. And with a really soft brush, try blend it into the top of the letter. I'm going to fix these bottoms of the letter afterwards. And now I'm going to create, fix the bottom here so the smoke isn't going down at all. And to do that, there's a little bit of fallout from all of these smoke layers. So to fix that, I'm going to create a group and call this maybe smoke group. 
can rename it by double clicking on it. And then I'm going to grab all these three smoke layers and drag them into the group. Now you can see them there in the group because they're indented a little. I can minimize that. They're all hiding in that group. And on this folder, group folder, you can create a layer mask. And now this layer mask will apply to everything that's in this group. So that way we can mask all of these smoke layers at once and get rid of all this extra smoke we don't want. I think there's one smoke layer. Oh yeah, this layer here that we painted on. I'm going to drag that into the smoke group too. If you make a mistake, you can press Control Z to undo. All right, so that's looking a little better. Now a couple other things just for effect. We can colorize this blue smoke. We can stick in a hue saturation layer and we're going to click the colorize button and we can make it blue and give it fairly heavy saturation. Lightness, leave it uh, zero. And we can also go on the layer mask and draw a gradient so that it's a little bit bluer at the top. And then bring down the opacity a little bit so it's not too intense. And now I'm going to create a little bit of a floor for the smoke text to sit on. I'll create a new layer again just above my text layer. And I'll just create a bit of a gradient with a deep red color. We're going to use this circle gradient and then drag it out about like so. And actually we want it below the smoke, so click and drag it and drop it below. And opacity we're going to reduce way down to about there, 50%. Now we only want it to be affecting a line around here, so I'm going to create a marquee with the M tool. I'm going to create a mask with this. And then select modify feather. Make it fairly big, 50 pixels. And now we want to select the opposite. Control Shift I, and that you can see selects the opposite opposite of what the marquee had selected before. Now create layer mask, and that cuts that all out. So now you can see that it gets cut right about here. Now using the Move tool with the letter V, make sure your mask is selected, and now you can pull it down to match up exactly where you want it. So now we have sort of a gradient, a circular gradient going out, and a floor for it to sit on. We can maybe reduce the opacity a little bit more. And now as the last thing, we can create a little bit of uh, smoke fumes for the top here. And we're going to do that by creating another layer, layer 3. And we're going to fill that with, and press D to get your default colors. And then white's in my background, so control backspace to fill with the background color. And then go up to filter, render, clouds. And this just creates some clouds on the background. You can rename it clouds. And we're going to reduce the opacity so that it becomes very faint. And we only want the clouds to affect this top area. So we're going to create a layer mask again. And G for gradient. And maybe we'll have it a circular gradient again. So it sort of comes out of the middle as a little stronger in the very center. I drew a fairly large one now but we don't want it affecting down here, so I'm just going to use the brush tool, letter B, and paint black on my layer mask down here so it doesn't affect the smoke text and is just a little bit more up here. I can reduce the opacity of the brush, so I can just give this here smoke a little bit of fine touches. I can bring it back in a little on some spots. And I think this down here is maybe a little flat. I'm going to paint with a 20% brush, just a few clouds to give my a little bit of texture, maybe like burning coals or something on the bottom. And that's it. We have our smoking text. Head over to tutorvid.com if you want to download the high resolution version of this tutorial, or you can also download the source files, including the TIFF file with all these layers so you can see what I've done and the final JPEG. And that's it. Check out more tutorials on tutorvid.com.